Now, stage management uh, saw some of this connectivity, and they and they they didn't want a display like this backstage to see where they were. There was a we mentioned that the show had absolutely no blacks whatsoever. There was these 26 foot tall towers. There were six of them, and during some of the scenes, like the the going to heaven scene at the end, we couldn't have any of that on stage because we were in heaven. So they had to push them off to the side. Our stage left side had eight feet. Our stage right side had 12 feet. So there was no room for blacks, no room for anything. And if you were sitting low in the stalls on one side, you could look right over to the arbors and see everything in the stage. So it was a very different sort of concept from uh, from you know traditional black cloth borders uh, and legs and that sort of thing. The disadvantage is, is that all the stage hands could be seen all the time. So we dressed them up in peasant clothes and gave them an extra 12 bucks a day. And they could walk around and place things and do what they needed to do pretty much in the dark. But since, since there was these trucks moving around all the time, it was not just crucial that they hit their spike marks on stage, but it was crucial they hit their spike marks off stage too because things fly. I mean, there are some scene changes where all six trucks are moving. There's 26 people on the stage uh, pushing things in every direction. There's a pit. The, the center of the deck right here had a 10-foot by 5-foot hole that went down very far. We almost lost an actor one day. It was very, very nerve-wracking. Um, so, to help them look at the spike marks in the dark, we had UV light over the stage. And I would try to turn it on and off uh, at, at appropriate amounts of time. But if one of the uh, stagehands would open up a white book backstage, it would just be the brightest thing on stage and very annoying. So they came to me and said, we need some sort of indication. We want to put monitors up high, just behind the proscenium, left and right, so the stagehands could just look up and see in a font this big what cue they're in and what notes, if any, that they had to do. So with this palette software, we have this open palette communication thing where people can ask things of the desk, even though they're not lighting related. I built this little application called Q-Tip SM. And basically, it's showing here in, in pretty big font, which they can change, you know, at will to, to customize what they wanted. And they could even put like a little pretty background picture in. You know, we had it looked up. We have a picture of it here, don't we, Richard? We had a nice one with the Tale of Two Cities logo and the French flag and the British flag and all the rest of it. But basically, it would just track me as I was running goes. So they could immediately see that they were in Q20 and it was labeled downstairs. Now sometimes the, the Q label uh, might be, you know, all lights downstage center. So therefore, the Q label, the note that came up was all lights downstage center. Very useful information for Richard and I, completely useless for them backstage. So if at that point they wanted to know, they wanted the glasses on the table, a prop needs to be placed, I could go into my desk and I could give a special little character here so that I could feed them exactly the text they want to see. So when we get to Q20, they actually see the text label that they want, which is glasses on table. Stage management found this really very useful. One of the other things that they they did is we were trying to, musicals always start far too long. They, every time you rehearse them, they're about three hours. And you need to get everybody out of the theater by 11 p.m. Uh, not just the IA guys, but the orchestra sitting there past 11, you've gone bankrupt before you've even started. So you have to figure out how to sh get the show down so that the curtain comes down at around uh, 10.45. People have time to wash their hands, cool the lamps, get out of the building. So. Every day we were looking at running times of scenes and we were looking at how long the acts were and the big controversy, we blew up one of the big uh, production numbers in Act 1 because it didn't really lend to the story, it was just a bit of comic relief, but eventually it was decided it had to go because we were just way over in time. So to help with that, I built this, uh, this little application. There's really no debate when... Uh, when the operator, 
There's no debate when the operator hits the button. There's a clock on the desk. As long as the clock's right, why not have that button press log it? So we made some macros inside of Palette called Start of Show, Start of Act, Start of Scene. And they would start these stopwatches. And dynamically, as the show was running, it would build a uh, HTML page that they could surf from anybody on the network. And every day, it would build a new thing. So the first queue, I would start Tale of Two Cities log for Thursday at this time. And it, it's, it said the show started at six minutes after eight o'clock. That's when Act One started. That's when the prologue started. And the prologue ended at this time. So the prologue was exactly two minutes and 45 seconds. And it would go down for every scene during the show. It shows how long the interval is, where you can report to house management that we did have 15 minutes to sell wine, it started here, it ended here. It goes down, it gives the runtime of the act, and down at the bottom, it gives the runtime of the show, the length of the interval, uh, and it actually shows the queue, which doses the lamps so that they have time to cool, which happened that night at quarter to 11. So they let the fans run for 10 minutes, shut the breakers off, and go home before 11 p.m. So now the lighting desk is becoming this centralized database for things beyond the lighting department to do it. One of the, uh, the follow spot guys said, well, can we have a display like this too? You know, because it's interesting to know which queue we're in. So now we have this thing called Q-tip follow spot. So this is, runs on a little touch screen like this and you attach it to the side of the spot. And what it does is it goes into the queue list to find out where queue uh, data information for the follow spot operator. We had four of them on this show. So they get a little display that looks like this on that touch screen. And they see that the desk is currently in Q20. And if I back up into Q19, you can see it's following here, Q19. And it says that this guy's next queue is Q62, and he's picking up Peggy, stage right. There's a little arrow that even shows him where stage right is, in case he forgot. <laughs> and it will show him which color the light's in and all the rest of it. So if we move this to the live mode, I can show you what it looks like on the desk. On the desk, it's just a fixture, like a very light or anything else. So I grab my... Uh, I'm going to grab this follow spot guy here, and I'm going to go into the uh, image parameter, and I'm going to change Caitlin, who's this cute little girl, to Peggy. And there's a little picture of Peggy. So if we're touring this show, the local guy doesn't even have to know what her costume looks like or what she looks like or anything else. Then we can say, okay, well, where are we picking this up? Well, we're going to pick this up stage, stage left, and it will actually draw a little arrow to where stage left is, and then I can say, and you're doing a headshot, and that puts that text in there. So the advantage of this is even though the information for the queue is embedded in, say, Q10, where they enter, if you only advertise that to them at Q10, I mean, it's too late. So this little application is actually looking ahead for his next queue. And the, and the spot guy can actually say, yeah, I know that one. Let me look at my next queue plus one. Oh, I'm picking up Sheila. And after that, I'll be picking up Kate. And after that, I got nothing. No more queues for me. Turn off my spot and go home. 